Hi, welcome. I'm building a music studio in my basement and I'm actually sitting in that space right now. Most of the construction's done. So the walls are up, drywall's up. It's painted, uh, I got all my gear in here, um, but it's a bit of a mess. And uh, I'm gonna be uh, going through a series of videos to show you kind of like how I got here now and then continue on with some acoustic treatment and making the space look really nice, a really inviting space that I'm excited to, to get into and work in. We'll dive into a lot of things and I think what we'll do right now is I'll, I'll turn around to the computer and we'll take a look at some of the plans that I made when I was initially designing the space, uh, knowing what I had to work with, the other rooms that were going to be in the basement and how I could actually make the most of the space that was available to me. Okay, so here's the basement. We've got about a thousand square feet to work with in the entire basement. Uh, so it's pretty good size. Very thankful to have so much space to work with. For now, we've got a, a den here. We've got a gym, which is mostly a playroom for the kids. And then uh, we've got the music studio. I didn't use any fancy program. This is actually just Google Sheets. Uh, yes, it was a ton of work uh, because this, <laughs> this, this grid here is uh, one foot by one foot. And I did all of that manually. I wouldn't recommend that. It's just what I had available. I didn't really feel like doing any research and other stuff, uh, other programs that I might work with. Um, so that's what I did. And something to think about if you don't, if you feel the same way, you can you can do the same thing. Um, so the the space that I have here, uh, you can count it if you want. It's about 15 feet uh, long, 10 and a half feet wide ish. And as you can see, I've designed separate walls so that I can increase the isolation. We're going to be talking a lot about what you might be used to calling soundproofing. It's not quite soundproofing the way that waterproofing isn't really waterproofing. It's more like a resistance for that. Same with this, it's sound isolation. You don't have true soundproofing where you 100% block sound. You just can isolate a certain amount of uh, decibels um, depending on how you build it. So uh, a lot of this comes to the book, Build It Like the Pros, the home recording studio book by Roger Vey. Uh, and so I've got two walls here. The plan always was two layers of drywall on each side. Uh, so these walls should be fully separated all the way around. Uh, this is the concrete foundation around here. And so wood stud framing, double layers of drywall. Um, and that's kind of the, the, the core of, of the whole strategy. There was an earlier design that I came up with that had an isolation booth in this area here. So you would first walk into the isolation booth before getting into the main area. And I just felt that that didn't really align with what I wanted to use the space for. And it was gonna become extremely challenging to isolate around the staircase here. This is an L-shaped staircase that goes up to the main floor. Um, you can see this is actually plumbing. That's what that refers to, uh, plumbing and metal posts. And so, it was becoming quite awkward to try to figure out a way where I could maintain the isolation and actually use this space as a proper isolation booth. Whereas I was afraid that I might put in all that effort and there would be better isolation in the control room than in the actual isolation booth. So in the end, uh, I just went with a single room. This is a good point to talk about kind of what I'm gonna use the room for because uh, you know, how often would I actually use that isolation booth? Probably not that much. I, I mostly just am by myself in this room working on music on my computer, you know, coming up with some, you know, riffs on my guitar, creating music. I don't really have a lot of people coming in where I would make a ton of use of that in a kind of professional, you know, singer in the isolation booth kind of scenario. It's just not what I'm typically doing. And if I want to record something, uh, you'll see this once we get into the acoustics that the my plans for the acoustic treatment in this room is going to make it a pretty nice space for recording vocals in or acoustic guitar or anything like that. So I'm I'm not too too worried about that. And in the end, it was still very challenging, especially this corner here. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, just some of the the challenges there. Once you look at the uh, the choice and the way it works around the staircase, it's very close quarters in there and very difficult to get. Um, what I needed to get done to maintain the isolation. So let's talk about uh, isolation goals. I would say that uh, you know my my general goal was to get about sixty decibels of isolation from the studio to the rest of the house, and that's a pretty huge amount of isolation. It actually takes very little if you're in a typical home 
like mine where it's actually a single family home. So it's not a townhouse. It's not an apartment. It's not physically connected to another, uh, you know, another family or another person or anything like that. So the isolation you need to achieve is just whatever it is with the other people in the house. Um, so with kids, that's mainly just the mornings and the evenings. If I want to work on music and the only time that I have to do that is when the kids are sleeping or, you know, maybe they're playing in the house on a Saturday afternoon when I have some time to work on music, that's the kind of isolation that I need to worry about. And this is really important if you're considering how you want to tackle isolation in your space, because what do you actually need? There was so many different strategies that I looked into different products, different materials that have different, you know, qualities in terms of sound isolation. And uh, so what do you actually need? And I, I came to the point where I realized I didn't actually need to go to the step of something like green glue. Two layers of drywall is going to be plenty and probably more than I actually need. It's, it's really just going to be kind of a, a nice bonus um, that I can kind of play at whatever volume that I want. Because I, I don't actually have super loud volumes when I'm working on music. If I'm going to be creating music, I might get up to 70 or 75 decibels. If I'm mixing music, it ten, tends to be softer than that, 65 or 70 decibels, more like 60 to 65 sometimes. So I, I don't actually need to be super loud. Um, I, I want to be careful with my ears. I want them to last a long time. And so um, you know, think about this kind of stuff if you're going to build a space. There might be some of you that could get away with, you know, just a single layer of drywall or not even doing two, you know, separated frames. Uh, maybe you just have one frame and it's um, and it's just two layers of drywall on each side. So there's so many different options, so many different variations that you can get into. And uh, what I landed on was just, I'm going to just try to do two layers of drywall all the way around. The one clarification that I would give to that is that for the music studio side, I'm using 5 8 drywall, significantly heavier, um, and then standard half inch drywall for the rest of the house. So, um, so inside the music studio on this side of the wall, 5 8 drywall on this side is going to be half inch. If you do it right, having two separated walls with two layers of drywall on each side and insulation in the studs, is going to get you about 60 decibels of isolation. Now, in terms of the acoustic performance, this is where it gets really interesting. One of the most uh, helpful things that I found in all of the research, even after reading the Master Handbooks of Acoustics, was uh, this video series um, done by Acoustics Insider and Music City Acoustics. I'll link that video series. I cannot recommend enough of all the things that I researched. This was the most mind-blowing thing for me, was watching that video series and understanding how acoustics work in a small space, and small being smaller than a typical classroom. So just pause for a moment and think about that. A typical classroom, like a school classroom, uh, anything smaller than that, is considered small in terms of acoustics. So unless you have a absolutely gigantic house and you can use a huge portion of that to build a studio, you have a small space. And even this, you know, for the average hobby musician, that's a pretty huge space. So even this is much smaller than a typical school classroom. So when you're dealing with acoustics in a home studio, I cannot recommend enough that you go check out that video series it's pretty lengthy and detailed in a good way. You're going to learn a ton of really amazing information. And the, the studio that they built in that series was very similar size to the room that I'm working with here. The main difference being that the ceiling height was much higher. So because I'm in a basement, I have a little over seven feet, seven and a half feet ish to work with in terms of ceiling height and they had closer to nine feet. Um, so that does change some of the things of the acoustics, but the, the length and width of the space is pretty similar. I did acoustic treatment previously, and I, I used Rockwell Safe and Sound, just three inches thick if you use one layer, and I built a studio, I shouldn't say a studio, I put some acoustic treatment up in a bedroom. <laughs> That's really what it was. And, uh, and I, I had read the Master Handbook of Acoustics at that point, uh, I had done a lot of research online to kind of see what other people had done. And I thought that I did a pretty good job. And I think all things considered, it was pretty good, but it only treats um, down to a certain level. You really have to get thicker. You have to get up to about six inches thick. And if you can get something denser than that, it's even better. So in this space, I'm gonna be using the comfort board. So not the safe and sound comfort board is much thicker and denser, sorry, not thicker, 
it's much denser, um, and that will help you treat uh, lower frequencies. And I'm gonna do that six inches thick for most of the panels rather than three inches thick. So I'm really excited to get into the acoustic treatment on this space because I'm gonna go from a three inch panel directly on the wall to a six inch panel with a six inch air gap. That is a pretty major investment of space for this room, which I will show some examples of that. Um, but I really am trying very hard to achieve the kind of uh, absorption values that they were able to get in that video series. So I want to show you a studio called Gray Box Nashville. This was the primary inspiration that I had in terms of what I wanted the space to look and feel like. So you can see an example here of the type of feel, very bright, very light. Uh, it's mostly white, some light wood, uh, and a little bit of black. This really is the kind of feeling that I want to get when I come into my studio. Some people like the very dark and moody kind of stuff, uh, which I also appreciate, but it's not the kind of thing that I want as my everyday feeling. And so I'm very excited to see if I can achieve this kind of feeling uh, with a basement studio, still keep it light and bright and open. Okay, so if we take a studio space like this and we try to apply it to a basement studio, what might that look like? So I've come up with a few different plans for the basement studio, and here's one of them. And if this is a little bit confusing, all this is is this is the floor, and this is what the walls look like if you're looking directly at them. So from the top, you can see the handle of the door, and if you're in the room, this is what the door looks like. So this was the idea where I would have you know a mixed position up here. You can see the gap where I've got six inch panels, six inch air gap, and then a design that generally follows the kind of feeling that there is for gray, back, gray box in Asheville. So I had created this design and I thought, you know what, this looks, this looks pretty good. I think I want to do it. And then I stumbled across this tool by GAK Acoustics where you can actually create 3D designs of the rooms and put yourself in them. Uh, and it's pretty amazing. It's a room visualizer, but it has all of the GIK Acoustics products in it. And so you can put together a studio design with real acoustic panels, and it will give you a sense of what it looks like in the room. And so if you look at this space, I, I had the design in Google Sheets where I was, had the top view, had the view of the walls. And when I actually built this, I just looked at it and I thought, this is, this is tiny. This is like, I feel suffocated in this space because this is a room that's a little over 10 feet wide, but I've lost a whole foot on each side because I've got a six inch air gap and a six inch panel. And this tool lets you be pretty accurate in terms of this, the, the actual size of it. And so I've got this you know, feature wall, a rough approximation of what that would look like. I've got a desk in there, um, and it's just so tiny. Now, if we, if we switch to this design, this is more traditional acoustic panels that are not floor to ceiling, and it feels way more open. It's still small, I'll give you that, um, you know, considering that we're still losing six inch air gap plus the six inch panel. So it's a full foot on each side that we're losing. But this one to me just feels way more open and inviting because you can still see the gaps around the panels um, and gives you a sense of it being bigger. So now you have a sense of what I'm trying to do with the space. And what I'll do is I will go into some new videos shortly after where we'll take a look at framing, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, all the details, drywall, you name it. And, uh, and we'll get through to where we are today with a room that's built uh, and I'm actually able to use it uh, today. None of the acoustic treatment is what I want it to be yet, um, but that should come throughout, uh, throughout some future videos. So thanks for sticking around. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it's helpful. If you have any questions, if I didn't explain anything well, uh, just drop it in the comments. And if you want to get notified of the, uh, the videos when they come out, just hit subscribe and I'll send something out. Uh, hopefully sooner rather than later.